Image via Getty on Tuesday evening, 63% of white women voted for Roy Moore, a man accused of assaulting multiple teenage girls, and cruising for more, so aggressively that he was thought to have been banned from the Gadsden Mall. I'll say it again, 63% of white women voted for the guy who was probably banned from a shopping mall for assaulting teenagers and for saying America was great during slavery. What world is this? White women as a modern voting bloc have hindered progress in this country, once again proving that they that would rather back a many times accused pedophile and bona fide racist over literally anyone else, apparently, an enduring one. White women's allegiance to racist, sexist, or predatory candidates is a long-standing tradition in this country and can be traced all the way back to their central role upholding white supremacy in the U.S., stellar work they are still doing today. It was only last year that the majority of white people in this country proudly proclaimed the freedoms that we hold to be self-evident include a particularly skeezy kind of celebrity's ability to touch my vagina when he likes. In the 2016 election, as you'll undoubtedly remember, 63% of white men voted for Donald Trump, another alleged sexual abuser, as did 53% of white women, while 93% of black women and 67% of Latinx women supported Clinton. In every presidential election since 1996, this pronounced gender gap has existed, that is to say, most women voted for the Democratic candidate. But, in that time period, the majority of white women voters have essentially always picked the white Republican candidate, no matter his utter betrayal of women, people of color, and other marginalized groups. Accused pedophile and definite bigot and horse ruiner Roy Moore will not advance to an Alabama, read more at the white supremacy is in the pudding. In 2012, 56% of white women voted for Republican Mitt Romney over President Barack Obama, a number that shoots to 61% when you count just women 45 and older, and all of whom were ostensibly won over, or at least not discouraged by their candidates' binders full of women. In 2008, 53% of white women voted for John McCain, a consistently anti-choice politician who once told a joke about a woman enjoying being raped by an ape, even though in both 2012 and 2008, Obama carried the female vote. In 2004, 55% of white women voted for the stealth misogyny of George W. Bush. In 2000, 90% of black voters voted for Al Gore, as did 63% of Latinx voters, according to color lines. Still, 49% of white women voted for George W. Bush, one point more than for Gore. Don't be fooled, the Democratic Party didn't do this. The national media didn't do this. Doug Jones, read more red white women's voting pensions go all the way back to the elections of Ronald Reagan, which introduced the term gender gap into the national political consciousness. In the 1984 election, Reagan won 54% of the men's vote but only 46% of the women's vote, a gap attributed, again, to minority women, 93% of black women, 73% of Jewish women, and 65% of Latinx women voted for Walter Mondale and his vice president Geraldine Ferraro. In many respects, white American women voters have proven to be interested in one thing, maintaining the status quo. But you've already heard this story, white women pick the white guy, despite his complete disregard for the LGBTQ community battling the AIDS crisis, his opposition to the Equal Rights Amendment, though, of course, Phyllis Schafly, the ultimate rendering of this kind of family values-driven white woman, famously led a charge against it too, and his desire to eliminate a slew of entitlements that benefited non-white voters. That's not even to mention the allegations that came out in 1991 from actress Celine Walters that Reagan raped her in the early 50s. In many respects, white American women voters have proven to be interested in one thing, maintaining the status quo, which comes at the expense of everyone who doesn't currently benefit from it. When we're talking about the women's vote, it's very rare we're talking about issues on top of the agenda for women of color, poor women, and LGBT women. Juliette Williams, a UCLA political theorist and gender studies professor, told broadly last year, Last night, the hidden factions of white supremacy fully emerged, though we know they were never, read more read so, truly, anyone but them. White women as a modern voting bloc have hindered progress in this country, once again proving that they would rather back a many times accused pedophile and bona fide racist over literally anyone else. Theories about why this is abound. In 2016 article in The Atlantic, Michelle Cottle attributes white women's unyielding devotion to voting Republican to sheer partisanship. She writes that many women can't get it up for traditional women's issues, like adequate family leave and equal pay, that they'd rather vote for a president who's tough on immigration or taxes. She also notes that hardcore Republicans and Democrats find it nearly impossible to switch to the other side. 
In a 2012 New Yorker piece, John Cassidy also tries his hand at this riddle, discussing wealth, age, and religion as potential factors. They have something, status, and often false sense of security, a hearkening back to traditional values, to lose. And it's true, money seems to cut more cleanly than gender. The wealthier white women who vote Republican, and who voted for Roy Moore on Tuesday evening weren't voting to expand access.